carvers and bush crafters out there. Um, welcome to another video on my channel, Woodsman's Finest. This is Max. Um, I just want to come at you with a couple of more casual videos. I know um, I usually try to find all kind of fancy backdrops and stuff like that. Um, and it's just taking me a lot of time to find these places and um, you know all the shooting and editing and all of this and it results in less videos coming to you so um, I want to talk about a couple of more detailed things in my it's still kind of part of the the carving X video series so um, I'm gonna put it in there and today it's more a little bit of a, of a practical more detailed look at um, the use of the axe um, maybe something that usually um, you know it's not just really about spoon carving, it's just really specifically about using different axes. Um, as you know, I just designed my own axe recently with Liam Hoffman. Um, it was a long process and I had a very specific, um, not only shape, but also weight in mind. Um, now you might argue over, you know, different weights and axes and stuff because, um, you know, everybody's different. You have, of course, you have smaller people carving and you have stronger, bigger people carving. By the way, um, if there's a couple of, you know, if there's a little bit of noise or something, this is really not a fancy, you know, backcountry place. Um, there's a road out there. This is just in, you know, suburban countryside-ish upper Austria. So um, there's quite a little bit of noise around. I'm sorry for that, guys. <laughs> I'm trying usually to create this illusion of some, you know, amazing place, you know. And I just came back from northern Ontario where it was not hard to find the wilderness here. You know, it's a little bit different. School kids walking by and stuff. Anyways, so, sorry, back to the topic. Um, I had a weight in mind for a certain reason, and I think on one hand it's really specific about the carver. Um, you have somebody who is, I don't know, like a kid or a smaller person, um, man or woman, um, might want to have something a little bit lighter. And a heavier person or a stronger person um, might want to have something a little bit heavier, but why is that and what is your specific um, ideal weight and um, How can I say that? The weight is very specific to the user, but the weight is also relative, you know, what I might mean by that is um, The following so over here. I have three axes that are my favorite axes at the moment for a certain reason and one of them is the axe that I designed, oh who, surprise, and that's also for a certain reason. So just, um, let's say, let, let me say it like this. This here doesn't need any introduction, this is the Hans Carlsen Sloyd axe. Um, this is a legendary amazing axe designed by very, very good people in Sweden. I love this axe, although I have my own, and I designed not only my own, but I also helped design other axes. Um, especially by Landwerk Forging in Denmark, but I love this axe. You know, um, it's tried and proven. Um, if I'm not mistaken, some of the design elements have really been taken from very old axes. You know, why did I still feel like I need to design a different axe? It's the weight. It's plain and simple. I I gotta be honest, guys. I would not change much else on this axe than the weight. Okay. Then, on the heavy side, so this was rather the light side, um, you know, there's lighter axes than that, uh, like the, what is that, I think the Swante there baby axe or something like that, but this is really a light axe for me at about, did I measure it, like 670 grams or something like this, 650, um, now on the rather heavy side, around 800 grams, um, with of course a bigger cutting edge and, um, just overall different um, balance as well. You see this one balances upside down like that and I just want to show this on this slide X as well. Um, this one also rather balances, it's hard to find a balance point in this one, but it rather balances upside down like this. Okay. Um, I love this axe too. This is the Njord. This was like the last axe that I reviewed um, from the Svante, uh, from sorry, from the Landwerk Forge in Denmark axes. The last one that I, um, you know, helped designing with a little bit. It's a heavier axe, um, very wide, long bevels because it's quite thick back here. Um, it's an amazing axe, stock removal, everything. Um, it's a little bit on the heavy side for me, so especially if I have to do 
stock right like right now um, you know I, I'm feeling this axe after a while but it has a distinct advantage being a little bit heavier I'm gonna talk about it in a second too so here in the middle in between um, the craft carver designed by me um, in conjunction and collaboration with Liam Hoffman masterly executed by Liam Hoffman in North Carolina um, currently the pre-orders are closed for this one because your reaction thank you guys was so overwhelming so um, until spring 2018 um, we have the pre-orders closed for this one but um, please subscribe to my um, newsletter on my website woodsmansfinest.com if you want to be notified if um, when this, this axe comes out again and when the pre-order starts again um, we think it's going to be um, spring 2018 <sighs> plug done so why this axe well weight wise it's right in between this is about 750 um, we have two fi uh, 550 for the head weight and we got um, 200 for the um, handle grams that is um, balance point not so much the point where it is because most of them are really balancing about an inch or something away from the head which is you know the closer it comes to the, the the hand the more balanced it feels the less head heavy it feels but there's another important balance on the axe itself um, and I hope I'm not standing too too far away from you guys to um, make sense but the other I, the other um, you know there's one balance point up and down the axe like this you know and then there's another one if you if you look at this axis here um, you know if you use basically um, something along the line of the X here as a pivot point if that makes sense you know the other ones obviously tilted down like this you know the sort of pivot point is somewhere down here in the bit this X on the other hand if I find the balance point it's balancing, side, it's balancing sideways like that that means it's pretty centered somewhere right in front of the eye somewhere around here maybe a little bit further back there is my pivot point of course it has to be further back in the eye somewhere otherwise you know if it was in front of the eye it would swing down but um, there's the balance point on this one whoops anyways so what does that do and why is the weight important and the relative weight to you and the relative weight um, in um, you know in mass when I take a light axe, like the, the Hans Carlson, that's just a 100 grams, give or take, lighter. I find when I carve with it, and I'm having a couple of the same pieces of beech here, really nicely spalted beech. Guys, I was searching the woods yesterday for spalted beech. When I work with... When I work with lighter axes, you know, in the beginning of the carving, I'm really feeling like there's a big benefit to it being lighter. We're gonna split this guy just across like that. So for that, I'm not gonna edit stuff here. So in the beginning, um, carving out the spoon with a lighter axe like this, this is so nice. This is just like swinging a kitchen knife. Um, there's no effort in it and especially when I'm going slower I have to say there is a distinct we're not gonna put the bowl on this guy here um, there's a distinct benefit to a lighter axe like this I really feel like it can go like this for a long time. Now when I use a lighter axe like this, I'm axing a different way. I'm creating more ridge lines, I'm taking more corners or ridges off, like here. And I, I think I'm going to have a dis distinct axing video out very soon again because, um, you know, people kind of request showing what I'm doing and uh, I'm really too lazy at the moment making an axe video, but it's gonna come. But since this axe is lighter, I have to axe differently because it's really hard 
it takes a lot of blows to take away wider surfaces. Of course, you know, like a hewing axe, you know, very wide, cutting edge, very heavy. You can take away a lot of material from a wider surface, you know, of course. So we have a little bit of a shorter cutting edge here, not short, it's like four inches or something. But and combined with the weight, you know, the little weight falls into a four inch long um, cutting edge just rather straight on this axe. So I need a little bit more blows, a little bit more lifting and dropping. And when I lift and drop, I need to accelerate the axe a little bit more because it's lighter. I can do it over a longer time because it's lighter, but it's resulting in more cutting, if that makes any sense. So, in the end, when I'm doing kind of my, you know, if I have to do a lot of stock, spoon stock, um, you know, doing cookses, um, last year doing quite a lot of bowl blanks, um, I have to say that the calculation in the, at the end of the day is really good, but it could have been sometimes better. And I really felt like, you know, using this X, cutting more often with it, just resulted in, you know, a little bit less, let's call it efficiency, you know. Um, it's light, has a long cutting edge, um, this is a little bit straighter, so the weight is not really falling in, in a tiny little, you know, section of it, but a little bit of a longer place. So, as far as effectiveness and efficiency, it's not the most efficient axe. If I only carve a couple spoons a day, um, it is absolutely lovely. It's so nice, it's brilliant. I love it. Don't get me wrong. But, and this is another very important part at this point here. I have to say as well that there is a distinct disadvantage I find with very, very light axes. And I'm struggling with it right here and right now. Maybe that's just me, you know. Maybe that's not everybody. I'm talking about myself here right now. And it sounds maybe funny, but it's accuracy. It is accuracy. That's a little bit of a disadvantage with light axes. Okay, let's get away from this one here and let's switch to the heavier axe. Seeing already, this is going to be a longer video. Just going to finish this one off. Could have done it with the other, with the other axe. Okay, so second piece. What we got here is like around an 800 gram axe, give or take. Um, and it has a, it's different, it has a long cutting edge, it's about 5 inches, I would say. Yeah, pretty much 5 inches in comparison here. Um, I love this one for stock removal, bowls, cookses, all of that. Um, advantages, more weight, it's going to take away more material when it drops, so there's a little bit more curve to it, that means also this more weight is dropping into a smaller place, or like a, a, small, like a rather small area than just distributing over a wider area. Um, balance is a little bit more head heavy, definitely head heavy. Um, balances right behind the head and does not balance on the side but balances upside down so the weight is probably in the bit not in the eye or not probably it is in the bit not in the eye so more weight more effectiveness when it drops into the piece but less efficiency why because it removes more weight it removes more material but weight um, lifting and dropping the axe um, is more tiring. It is still efficient, of course it is efficient, because you know you lift it up without a lot of acceleration, just dropping the axe is going to do already a lot of effect, because it is heavier. But since I'm a factor as well in my endurance, 
it is less efficient because I can't keep going with this axe as long. Now, for somebody who is, again, doing a couple spoons a day, something like this, again, great choice. Landwerke Forge, Njord. I love this axe. Beautiful, um, laminated construction. Not the cheapest, but a lifetime of a beautiful piece. You just want to look at and handle and um, all the above. But for me, doing a lot of work, if I do a couple bow, bow blanks, I would probably pick this up, but all day long carving, maybe I'm going to tire out a little bit more. Still, I pick it up because I love using this axe, don't get me wrong. But we're talking really, you know, like my facts here. We don't talk facts in general because I, you know, want to be careful with this kind of claims. But for me, I would say efficiency is limited in this case by my strength. Okay, let's just keep that there. Advantage, besides removing more stock, besides having more weight working for itself, accuracy, plain and simple. I feel with these kind of axes, not only can I ax differently because, excuse me, I think we're gonna put the bowl over here. I ax, I ax differently with this ax, it has different bevels, I need to get used to that. Um, I ax differently with this ax because I can. With only a little bit of acceleration, I can take away a lot of material here. Which would have taken me longer with the other ax, so, you know, different style. However, oh, not however. Um, additionally, I feel like, um, especially in the crank part and other finer carving parts, since I don't have to accelerate this axe as much, um, I can in general axe a little bit more accurately. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by just uh, demonstrating it probably. So in my humble opinion, the less I have to accelerate the axe, the more control I can use it, okay? So what I mean by that, if I have to accelerate a lot, you know, this is another very, is a less controlled movement for me than just lifting, aiming more or less instinctively and dropping the axe, you know. So especially when I crank, when I, when I chop the crank out, I feel like with less blows and more control, I can create a nice surface and an even crank. And this is very, very apparent between this one and the Hans Carlsen Sloyd X. Uh, there's no other way I can describe it. I hope this makes any sense, but definitely have your axes have accuracy and control going for them. At the downside of being heavier and maybe not being able to keep this level of control up over as long as much of time. Which brings us to the real medium axis. At 750 grams, I consider my Sloyd, uh, my, my craft cover um, real medium. 750 grams is that like 1.7 pounds? Something like that. Metric here. Sorry, guys. So let's sum it up. Let's find a piece of beach. It's right here. Split the sky in half. Possibly not. It's a ton of, ton of knots here. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so let's sum it up. Why medium? This axe has an amazing balance. Just picking it up, I'm feeling right away, and this is not my doing, this is Liam Hoffman's ingenuity. Um, I'm feeling right away that I'm not, you know, it feels lighter than it is 
because the balance is, like I said, it's really balanced between pole and bit, pole and bit, pole, pole. Jesus. Um. Let's put the twenty knots over here. Um. So what this does basically is it gives me the stock removal ability of a way heavier axe. This feels very light. It cuts like a light axe, like a thin light axe. It throws punches like a heavy axe. It gives me the the light feel that makes me feel like I can keep going with this guy for I don't know all day long this is just amazing and again this is not here really just my doing this is really where Liam put um, the weight and everything in this in this uh, in this axe it's a hundred gram heavier than the Sloyd axe but it feels just so light and then at the same time because it's a it's a shorter cutting edge, um, not that much shorter. It's the same length as the as the Sloyd X, but at a little bit more weight and way more curvature. Just to give you an idea, how much more curved this axe here is. Same bevel angle, same sharpness but way more curvature okay here a little bit more weight in a bit this slices into material like crazy very deep but th this one nearly does the same depth but with with more of um, of a prying action this was very important for me that the bit is not as tapered as all the other Swedish axes because um, it, it's you know it's really nice how deep they cut, but in in carving and also in uh, you know chopping down trees, you know just in lumber work, Swedish axes cut really deep. It's amazing, but then you gotta pry them out. You gotta get them out again. Or in carving, it doesn't really remove the chip. But I wanna remove the material, you know. So um, to somehow wrap this video up because this is already way longer than I actually intended this one. Um, you gotta find an axe that is efficient and effective for you and has a medium weight in in your terms, in your understanding. Remember though, mass to gravity and the density of wood is a fact that is not depend that is relative to you. You know, your strength, your size, your style of carving is one factor but that does not change mass, gravity and the density of wood. So find an axe in my opinion that's around 750 grams. If you're interested in this axe, um, go to my website, go on my, um, get onto my um, newsletter so you're notified when the pre-order starts again and get yourself an axe in this realm or this size and this weight because it's gonna do this to the wood, you know that's going to be always the same. Um, it's going to be efficient while being effective. Your accuracy is going to be better because of the medium weight versus a light axe. Um, you're going to have more sock removal, which is the effectiveness. And you might be able to keep going longer having this good stroke removal, which is the efficiency. So um, this is basically my my little uh, tutorial and my little opinion on this today. Do with it whatever you want. I'm um, just trying to, to, to get these approaches to you so um, you can make a better decision. Um, don't just see it as a plug, please. Um, this can be um, for many different style of axes. This can be true for a lot of different things. So um, just do with it whatever you want. I gotta keep making stock. Um, filling up orders so um, yeah thanks guys for watching thanks for the support I'm nearly 3,000 subscribers now um, more videos coming I gonna crank them out less fanciness less video maker videographer kind of stuff I just want to get information out to you guys 
Um, thank you for the 10,000 subscribers on Instagram. Uh, I really appreciate it. Please follow me. Um, please leave a like on this video if you watched it and you got something out of it. Um, if you want to keep going with this channel um, and if you want to keep supporting it, please just uh, subscribe. I think um, this is really the kind of mutual benefit that we can get from each other. And um, yeah, stay safe. Have a beautiful day. I'm going to see you next time. Cheers.